Hello, we live in the era of ultra-fast communications. However, sending messages far away has not been easy for the better part of our history. Having a reliable way to send messages over long distances has always been essential for the governing bodies. Prior to the advent of the internet, of the telephone and the telegraph, the Persians had created a way to swiftly send messages across their vast empire. Before continuing, do not forget to subscribe to Random History. New interesting videos are coming up. The story of the Royal Road, next on Random History. The Achaemenid Empire was also called the First Persian Empire. It was founded by Cyrus the Great in 550 BC. At its greatest extent under Xerxes I, it spanned from the Indus Valley in the east to the northern and central part of ancient Greece in the west. The Persians had also conquered the Kingdom of Egypt as well. It is rightfully considered the largest empire of its time and is among the largest empires ever created. The King of Kings was at the head of this vast realm. He ruled over a multi-ethnic and multicultural kingdom. The religious correlation has been considered a remarkable feature of the Achaemenid Empire. The Persians succeeded in governing over this vast state via the satrap system. Satraps were the governors of the provinces. Practically, a satrap served as a local viceroy to the king. His autonomy, however, was considerable. The Achaemenid Empire was divided into 20 such provinces. There was no one capital. Instead, there were three capitals. Susa was a strategic center and effectively the capital. Ecbatana was the summer residence of the king and Persepolis was the ceremonial capital of the empire. The communication of the central authority with the periphery of the realm was of cardinal importance. It was essential for the central administration to be able to refer messages over long distances and promptly receive information. Thus, eventual problems would be promptly dealt with. This, however, was no easy task. The first roads did not resemble two roads as we would recognize them today. It seems that the early roads were basically used because they happened to be the shortest routes between two points of interest, such as cities, villages or settlements. There were hardly more than simple trails, which after frequent use over long periods of time, became worn into the ground. Later, what one could call an organized road would be built. Ancient roads can be recognized today thanks to structures such as bridges that were constructed along them. By the way, do you know which is the oldest bridge in Europe still standing? Find the answer in our video on ancient bridges one can still cross. It will pop up right after the end of this one. Back to the Royal Road. Most ancient roads spanned over relatively short distances, and like this, the Royal Road of the Persians used to run for 2,700 kilometers. This is more than 1,600 miles. Historical records, archaeological research, and the writings of the Greek historian Herodotus have all contributed to the reconstruction of the course of the Royal Road. It began in Sardis, in modern-day Turkey, near the coast of the Aegean Sea. Sardis was the capital of the Kingdom of Lydia, which had been absorbed by the Persian Empire. The road traveled east through Anatolia. It proceeded through the narrow mountain pass of the Sicilian Gates to the old Assyrian capital of Nineveh. Then it turned south to the historic city of Babylon. There it seems that the road split into two routes, one traveling to Ecbatana and the other continuing to Susa and then to Persepolis. The royal road was built by Darius I, also known as the Great. His reign began in 522 BC and lasted until 486 BC. Archaeologists, however, theorize that the construction of the Royal Road did not take place solely under the reign of Darius. It 
seems that the Persians then improved the already existing road network. Part of this network was probably constructed by the kings of Assyria. Assyria was a Mesopotamian empire that preceded the Persian empire by which it was eventually conquered. The royal road ran through territories with dry climate. Therefore, there was little need for the extensive engineering like the one that characterized the Roman roads. Nevertheless, the royal road was a feat of organization and a testament to the administrative skills of the Persians. These skills were vital for the empire to flourish. The Royal Road was a highway built to facilitate rapid communication and intelligence gathering throughout the empire. Herodotus, the so-called father of history, was marveled by its operation and commented extensively on it. According to his writings, the Royal Road was used by specialized couriers tasked with divulging the orders of the King of Kings to his distant subjects. They also brought back news from the territories. Thus, the king and his advisors were rapidly informed about local grievances or any other kind of trouble arising. Therefore, the central authorities could swiftly intervene and quell any tumult. Local disputes were quickly resolved before they could fester and become disruptive. Herodotus describes the system of the couriers using the royal road in very laudatory terms. In his own words, there is nothing mortal which accomplishes a journey with more speed than these messengers, so skillful has this been invented by the Persians. For they say that according to the number of days of which the entire journey consists, so many horses and men are set at intervals, each man and horse appointed for a day's journey. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor darkness of night prevents them from accomplishing the task proposed to them with the very utmost speed. The first one rides and delivers the message with which he is charged to the second, and the second to the third, and after that it goes through them, handed from one to the other, as in the torch race among the Greeks, which they perform for Hephaestus. This kind of running of their horses the Persians call Angarion. The term Angarion, used by the Greek historian, is often interchangeable with the term Piradasis. This term is found in numerous tablets unearthed at Persepolis describing the relay courier system. It is thought that by having fresh horses and riders in specific intervals along the royal road, it would have taken seven to nine days for messengers to be carried the entire distance. Normal travelers or an army on foot might have taken about three months for the same journey. The royal road was essential for the operations of the civil and military administrations of the Achaemenid Empire. One could say without exaggeration that the Royal Road was instrumental in the expansion of the Persian Empire. In a twist of faith, however, the very instrument that held the Empire together contributed to its downfall. In the West, a young king wanted to take revenge for the invasion of Greece by the Persians more than a century earlier. He went by the name Alexander III, King of Macedon. We now refer to him by the name Alexander the Great. In 334 BC, with his troops, he invaded the Persian Empire. He swept away all the armies King Darius III could master to face him. It has been said that Alexander would not have been able to move so fast towards the center of power of the King of Kings had it not been for the royal road which he followed. The rest is history. The conquest of the Persian Empire did not mean, however, that this was the end of the royal road. The Greeks that ruled the lands after the Persians continued to use it. The Romans that came after the Greeks improved the royal road. They constructed the roadbed with a hard-packed gravelled surface of 6.25 meters width held with a stone curbing. Traces of this road were found in a stretch near Gortium. Of course, the Romans were master road builders. They did not simply copy the Persian roads. Instead, they took the concept of roads to a whole new level by melding it with advanced civil engineering 
and construction practices. These practices were partly inherited from other peoples such as the Cretans, the Egyptians or the Babylonians. Nevertheless, the Romans improved on these practices as well. But this is a topic for another video. Back to the royal road. The farsightedness of the Persians in organizing apostle service cannot be disputed. Suffice to say that until the development of effective optical telegraph systems at the end of the 18th century, messengers on horseback riding over a good road system remained the fastest method of sending a message over land. Renowned is the Pony Express of the US in 1861. It was a mail delivery system that used continuous horse and rider relays. Its riders captured the popular imagination. Alas, it was hopelessly outdated by then and it proved to be a financially disastrous enterprise that lasted only briefly. However, the unofficial creed of the US postal services is neither snow nor rain, nor heat nor gloom of night stays the scurious from the swift completion of their appointed runs. These were the words used by Herodotus to express his admiration for the Persian couriers roaming the royal road. And this was the story of the royal road. Do you know of any other ancient methods of communication over long distances? We would love to read them in the comments below. Stick around for a few more seconds because a couple of videos are going to pop up that might interest you. If you feel so inclined, please like, share and subscribe in order not to miss out on our future videos. Until the next time, keep learning!